Welcome. In some denominations, you'd make a trip to the pastor's study for answers to the really tough questions. Well, let's see what we can do here. Merry meet, blessed be. Welcome to another session in a very different pastor's study. Depending on how you got here, I'm Bishop Cal Lippitt of the Universal Episcopal Church, or Ide Nodenson of the Temple of Gaia, and welcome. Oh, I was given a project this week, along with everything else, including enduring this shingles thing that I'm dealing with. I came across the reading for the 25th Sunday after Trinity, which is also the same as the 6th Sunday after the Epiphany. And I came across, well, here's the, here's the start of the Gospel reading. Then if any man shall say to you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before. Wherefore, if they say it to you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. Etc. Read the rest of it yourself. And there was a story in the book of Acts. Early on in the book of Acts, as a matter of fact. Um, when the powers that be got together to figure out what to do with Peter and these other people left over after Jesus had been put to death. And a wise man by the name of Gamaliel came out and said, well, he listed a bunch of wannabe messiahs that came before Jesus. Pointed out that uh, we didn't have to do anything with them. They just disappeared. And as for these guys, well, they'll disappear too. If they're the same thing. If they're not, we don't want to be opposing God. But the point is, there was a bunch of wannabe messiahs. And... Jesus warned that there were going to be a bunch. And we've got them now. They, they were, they are, they're going to be. Probably until the day comes when whatever happens that resolves all of this. One of them really struck me as unique. Not that it's it's the same breed of stupidity. The same breed of fast talk that gets people following. But somebody cooked up a story that President Obama was going to put all of the United States Marines into unisex headgear. Basically what they were talking about was the white dress cap that goes with the dress blue uniform that is so distinctively marine. And he was going to put them all in the kind, basically in the kind of headgear that the women wear and declare it unisex. And so here's this Dr. Kleinschmidt. And let's see, what is he? They talk about him this article I had, I'm looking at on, from Right Wing Watch talks about him having a pro, uh, some sort of a program, Pray in Jesus' Name, where he claims that it's all part of an Obama plan to allow transgender soldiers to serve in the military by t turning all of the Marines into an abomination before God. Well, number one, 
the Obama administration and the White House in general has been rather adamant that there was no such plan, there is no such plan, and there ain't going to be any such plan. There are some uniforms that are basically unisex. Nobody's going to go into combat in a dress. There are some uniforms that are not unisex and they're that are not going to be. And I would like to point out that I served active duty beginning at the tail end of the Vietnam War. My service began in 1971. The war ended in 1972. And I went through all the crazy stuff with commanders being turned into social workers and all sorts of other things in the Air Force. And I've seen all sorts of things, but one thing I did not see was the White House saying anything about uniforms, with the one exception of something that I heard about from the past, the not too distant past of my active duty time, and that did not come from the president. It came from the First Lady, Lady Bird Johnson. There were these t-shirts, v-neck t-shirts, that all the guys I knew called Ladybird shirts. Why? Because Ladybird Johnson didn't like it when the men with their open-collar summer-type shirts in their uniforms had that little white bit of underwear showing. It was, the story is it was against her southern lady sensibilities. I don't know if it was that or she got turned on by a guy with a hairy chest. At any rate, we had that as an available option the entire time that I was on active duty. But that's the only one I ever heard of. But the point is, we've got these people running around. I could name quite a few, many of whom were once well thought of, such as the Reverend Jim Jones. And yes, he, among others, was a, uh, a member of the clergy of a mainstream denomination. And I could go on and name some others that supposedly did some wonderful things. But take a look inside, take a look within. And take a look at how much their work actually matches the teaching that they claim to be teaching. And I can tell you this, somebody with a one-subject hang-up based on a rumor that was proven to be a rumor is not real. You go to a church and you find an overwhelming number of the people who came in as married people, over time they wind up being married to other people, and then you find other things. I can, I can think of one particular, I won't even say what denomination they are. And it's not a reflection of the denomination, even though I don't think too much of the particular religious body, but the number of people that committed suicide in a certain stretch of time at that particular location, a member of that particular little group, you know them by their fruits. And don't think 
that this has nothing to do with you if you have if you're not a Christian. Oh, it does. Because this is a problem that spans all paths. It's called agenda. It's the most common thing to call it. Using a path for your own way. I'm not going to pray that I don't. But there are plenty that do. There are plenty that see the opportunity and go for it. And we've got to watch out for them. Mary part, Mary meet again, blessed be. See you next week. This has been a presentation of the Wise Ones Net. Merry part and blessed be.